two applications of centripetal force. The first one is a carousel, and we see here that the carousel is rotating around. These pods represent where the people would go, and you can see that as they go around, these swing out away from their vertical position. So normally they'd hang, hang straight down, and they've moved out a little bit. Now, if it's moving in a circle, or if each of these pods are moving in a circle, then there must be a centripetal force, and that centripetal force is directed towards the center of their motion. Each of these moves along a horizontal circle. So think about a circle that goes that way, and they're rotating around that. So the centripetal force must be directed towards the center of that. Another way of looking at that is if we pause it, and just take this one for instance, its centripetal force will be directed towards that center there, but at that level. This one here, its centripetal force will be directed towards the center in that direction, so it's along that line, just at that level, so it's something like that. So what I'm going to do is leave it play, <clears throat> I'm going to put in the forces, and we'll see that there are three forces acting on the body here. Um, there'll be the weight downwards, and then there'll be two components of the tension. So there's a tension force acting up like that, but we'll resolve that tension force into two components. One that's directed towards the center of the circle of motion, so that component of the tension will be the centripetal force, and the second one, the vertical component of the tension, which will be straight up, will be equal but opposite to the weight. Now, if it's equal and opposite to the weight, it means there'll be no net force vertically, so there'll be no acceleration vertically, and that will allow these pods or these swings to stay at the same horizontal level. <clears throat> so the reason they don't go up and down is because um, the vertical forces are equal, but there will be an unbalanced force directed towards the center of the circle of motion that keeps the objects moving in a circle, and that's what we call the centripetal force. So it's a bit of a mess. The blue force is the tension. Actually, this one is clearer. The blue force is the tension, and the black force is the weight. If we resolve that blue force into two components, one of those components horizontally is the centripetal force. That's the unbalanced force in the system. That's the red one. And the other component isn't seen here, but it would be vertical, vertically up there of equal and opposite magnitude to the weight. So, <clears throat> just to recap, there's no net force vertically. As a result, these... Uh, keep rotating around at the same height. There is an unbalanced force here and that unbalanced force allows the system or allows these objects to go in a circular fashion. Now watch what happens when I increase the speed or decrease the period. <clears throat> so what happened here when we make it spin faster is these pods go further out. They do rise up as the speed increases but if we keep it at constant speed they'll travel at the same height. As a result then, the tension and the string is at a greater angle, there's a greater horizontal component of that tension, so there's a bigger centripetal force, and that greater centripetal force is needed to keep the object moving in a circle when the linear velocity is larger. The vertical force, or the vertical component of that tension, still matches the weight, so these travel at the same height. So we can see it like so. If I was to drop that down, maybe to 3, <clears throat> what would happen as the period um, decreases or the speed increases or the speed changes is there is a change in height but we're not worried about that we're only worried about when the speed settles to a particular value and once more we have an unbalanced force that's the centripetal force directed towards the center of the circular motion and the vertical forces are equal and opposite meaning it's not going to rise up or drop down